And we're live. Welcome, everyone, to our special presentation strictly for our partners out there and our uh, potential future partners. My name is Matt Price, Manager of Enablement here at Object First. I'll be your host today. Uh, we've got a lot of great content jam-packed for you guys coming up. Uh, first and foremost, a couple quick housekeeping notes. If you've got any questions that you have throughout today's presentation, please feel free to leverage the question boxes either on the YouTube platform or we're also simulcasting over on LinkedIn. Now, with that said, this presentation is exclusively for you partners. So firstly, let me set the stage a bit on Object First as a company. So going back 15 or so years ago, Ratmir Timoshev and Andrei Baranov founded a company known as Veeam Software. Some of you guys may be very, very familiar with Veeam. It is the leader in modern data management and protection in the space. And fast forward to today's climate, ransomware is just exponentially on the rise, a new attack every 11 seconds. So it's truly become an epidemic. So when you look at you know, all the potential target storage options that the Veeam customer has the ability to leverage, Having simple, secure, and powerful storage on-prem that's also ransomware-proof has become fundamental to a comprehensive data protection strategy. So during today's presentation, we're going to give you a brief summary on what Ootby is, our out-of-the-box immutable storage target specifically built for Veeam customers. But more importantly, we're going to showcase for you why you should want to partner with Object First so that you can position Ootby for your Veeam clients. So with that said, let me bring on our first guest, our CEO, David Bennett. Now, full disclosure, David is traveling abroad and there's a little bit of complications with bandwidth over there, apparently. So we've got David via audio. Welcome to the show, David. How's it going over there? Hopefully we still have David. Hi, Matt. Hopefully you can hear me. Oh, you there, David? All right. So David's David's having some issues right now with his audio. So I'm going to leave his feed on. So if he comes back in, he can join us. So, you know, with that said, we've got a few different special guests on the phone today. So while we're waiting on David's audio to come back, what I want to do is shift gears a bit and bring on Cam. So let me turn yours on, Cam. So Cam Cronkite is our channel partner manager here at Object First. Welcome to the show, Cam. Glad to have you. Hey, thanks so much, Matt. So glad to be here today. Right on, man. So why don't you go ahead and, and showcase for you know our potential partners why partnering with Object First is going to be an ultimate strategy for their Veeam customer? Oh, perfect. I'd love to. There are a lot of great benefits that value-added resellers have found in partnering with Object First. And I want to cover just a couple of those and why it makes sense for others. Maybe they haven't partnered with us yet. Why it makes sense to do so. So first is that we're a 100% channel-driven model here at Object First. The only way an end user can buy Ootby is through one of our channel partners. And we know, just like you said earlier, that listening to the market, security and protecting data from ransomware is at the top of customers' minds today. And of course, Ootby delivers ransomware-proof backup storage for Veeam. And the only way customers can purchase Ootby is through the channel. So it's really key, Matt, that our goals align with that of our channel partners. Yeah. We're helping our resellers deliver the security and the protection that their clients need and they're asking for. So since the only way they can purchase Oopi is through the channel, that means we only win when they win. Mm -hmm. So at Object First, Matt, we are 100% all in with the channel. Uh, another reason is velocity. We want to help our resellers win and close their deals faster. Since we're purpose-built for Veeam, our customers, uh, at Veeam customers, it makes it so easy and actually helps speed up the sales cycle. Our partners are already selling Veeam to their customers, and it's the best data backup solution in the world, as you already said. So it makes sense to add Object First to the purchase of Veeam. Uh, the third reason is that Object is, is simply the Object First team. Our team supports you with enablement, with training, marketing materials, and even personalized demos for your clients. And I know you've been a part of a lot of those, Matt. I'm talking about really myself and my team. So this is really, for me, a personal commitment. We love helping our partners. We're always here to help win your next deal. 
And we're on a mission to delight our partners and to build relationships, not just for today, but really for the long term. And we work hard each and every day to provide them with the right tools, the right resources, so that we can help position them, Matt, as trusted advisors with their clients. And of course, to win more deals and win them faster, right? Uh, last but of course not least, uh, we offer high margins and, and our partner program. You can actually increase the value of your opportunity just by selling object first alongside of Veeam. We know, of course, as a reseller, there are a ton of options when it comes to presenting storage to their customers. And the market's full of options. Many of those storage options can be heavily discounted, leaving the partner with limited to no room for margins. And not only is Oopi a ransomware proof storage option for Veeam customers, but it is also the best uh, price to performance ratio while offering generous margins. So with our partner program, Matt, we offer up to 30 points on a deal registration. 30 points, that's pretty good. There you go. And to give you an example of what that means in your pocketbook, uh, on a quote with a half a petabyte of data, that's about $60,000 in margin opportunity for our resellers. Those are really generous margins. And so we're excited to offer those and we want to empower our partners to not only win, but also to make money while ensuring their customers never have to pay a ransom for data ever again. So a lot of great reasons, Matt, to partner yeah. and sell Object First. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome that's stuff, Cam. And, and, you know, for me, one of the things that really resonates is the whole point of Object First and Ubi is to enrich the Veeam experience. So exactly. those that have adopted Veeam are looking at going with the Veeam solution. Ubi exists to make sure their experience is elevated and they're also protected against those ransomware attacks that it's not the, the question of if, like we've always heard, it's when. Right. And when you look at potential options in the cloud, well, what would happen if you were hit with ransomware there, having to download all that data to bring your business back online? Not only is that extremely timely, but it's also very, very cost prohibitive to do something like that with a full, you know, A to Z restoration. So a lot of things to consider. And that's why, you know, Ubi is strategically placed to be that initial landing repository for Veeam customers. And towards the tail end of this call, I'm going to actually showcase a demo for you guys and go into a little bit more of the technical reasons, you know, why we're uh, the best storage for Veeam because we have some specific integration that we'll talk to towards the end. Uh, so looks like we might have David back, Cam. So what I'd like to do is give him a, a round two, see if his internet's going to work this time. So let me see if I can bring him on. David, are you with us? I think I'm here. We hear you. Right on, right on. Well, welcome to the show, man. Glad to have you. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me, Matt. And as Matt mentioned, um, Early on, having some uh, connectivity issues. I'm actually over in Europe at the moment, so it's uh, late evening here. Um, and I know Cam answered, uh, obviously, a lot of the questions why partner with us and things like that. But uh, I, I think some of the things that, that I'd like to say is, obviously, you've been talking about ransomware, and, and unless everyone has been under a rock for the last five years, it's been front of mind for a lot of us, which is actually... It has a good and it has a bad side. It's bad for those people that's been affected, but it's actually been great for the channel because the channel has built a huge ecosphere around protection and protected environments, protected end customers and things like that. And honestly, that's the marketplace I came from. But you keep putting up these walls and you should put up a number of walls to stop the bad guys getting in. And I think you mentioned this, Matt, is you've actually got to take the view, though, is no matter what you put up in front of everything, the bad guys are going to get in. And the bad guys now, not only just they, you deal with ransomware, but if they delete and eradicate your backup, you have no business. So you only have two choices. You either close your business or you pay the ransom. And honestly, that's exactly why Object First and Oopy came about, was to, to do a couple of things. Is Backup has always been, let's say, the ugly uh, child of the security stack because everyone was all interested about protection, 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 protection. And backup became this kind of almost insurance to, to, uh, to deal with. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you think about the industry and how it progressed forwards, it's got to be elevated to a first-class citizen 
and has to be part of the security tech stack. Yeah. And so what we do, and, and Cam obviously talked about through some of the benefits of partners and things like that, but essentially we remove the human error in creating immutable backups for your customers. And this really makes it easy for them to use, easy for them to enable, and you're selling a solution to actually solve the problem your customers have. And you mentioned it is, we have one sole purpose, immutable backups for Veeam. We don't build a product for anyone else. We don't build a product for any other kind of environments, things like that. It's purely for Veeam and it's controlled via the Veeam experience, which I think you'll demo. So you don't need any of that additional storage experience. I mean, our product is so simple that even me, a CEO, could install it. And we hear, my last two seconds is, we hear a lot about vendors talking about um, zero trust. Yeah. It's a fallacy. There's no such thing as zero trust because you have to trust someone. Yeah. Object first and OOP, we take a zero access approach instead. And so the zero root access to the box, you can't access anything on the box. And so it's a very different from a zero trust environment. So um, there's a huge opportunity here for a partner. Um, whether you are just a software house and you're a Veeam partner, um, you can make great margins now selling our product attached to Veeam. It's also a great product to upsell into your customer base. Um, as we go forward, more and more industries are going to need immutable storage. And it extends that standard 3 to one rule. Yep. No, I couldn't agree more, David. Absolutely. And the the zero access part that you touched on is is something that we're really just trying to scream from the rooftops because not a lot of people realize how significant that is because everybody hears about ransomware, but what about the insider attack? It's not like those are disappearing, right? So you still have to be protected from that, you know, vector as well as the ransomware side, you know, all of that comprehensively to have truly an immutable on-prem repository. And that's exactly what Ootby delivers. You're absolutely right. And I think the other thing is, is you get a near integrated appliance experience because of our, our integration with Veeam, but you actually get a separation of yep. the two separate companies from the data protection layer and the immutable storage layer. So you actually get a double uh, yeah. layer of, of protection because they're two separations versus other vendors' products in the marketplace that pertain to be easy to use because they're integrated. Well, we provide that integrated experience, but then the separation from a security perspective because we're a separate company to Veeam. Yep. Yep. Completely agree. I mean, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, certainly when it's the livelihood of your business that potentially is at risk. So. No, I, I, absolutely. And I think, I mean, any of the partners on here, if you said to them, would you put all of your security protection products in one cust in one vendor? Their answer probably is, hell no. So why would you do that from a data protection perspective right. and a storage perspective the same as well? Makes sense. Makes sense. David, thanks so much. And, and I'm glad we got you and, and your audio held up for that. That was very insightful. Really appreciate that. Um, hope you uh, continue your tour in Europe and everything goes smoothly. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Awesome. So with that said, you guys have heard from the Object First crew, but what I'd like to do now is transition over to our very special guest, Mr. Brent Earls, the CTO of Mirazon, one of Object First's very first partners. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here, Brent. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Right on. So uh, why don't, before we go into some of the questions, you share a little bit about you know who you are, Mirazon, what you guys do, that type of thing for those on the call that don't know you guys. Yeah, so we're based in the Midwest US, Kentucky. Um, and we are a VAR slash consulting services company slash managed services company. So we do all three different ecosystems. Um, and we kind of focus on that small to mid market customer place. We have some enterprises, but we kind of focus more in that that mid range. Gotcha. So what would you say, how has Ootby improved your customer's experience in general? Yeah, it's backups are constantly evolving. You know, back in the day, it was, oh, we can do full image level backups now. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, oh, the new tape drive doesn't have to be cleaned every week to stay functional and all of this. And mm -hmm. 
the offsite backup component really is where we had our only options for object for a long time yeah. and our only op options for immutability. And that was fine when that was just the oh crap copy of our data. You know, we've got our on-prem, that's what we care about. And if we have to pull it from up there, that means the whole building's burned down, so it doesn't matter. And if it takes three days, well, we're gonna have to find hardware anyway. So not that big of a deal. With ransomware though, it's the nor the biggest disaster companies are having now isn't the natural disaster we worried about. We always used to make the joke, oh, if a jet engine falls on your building or something <laughs> like that. That's not the disaster anymore. The most common disaster now is ransomware. And we say ransomware collectively. It's really the malicious actors now. Yeah. These aren't dumb people anymore. You know, it used to be you had basically your little script kitty who would get in, tell it to go, it would self-propagate, and then it was done. They're intelligent actors now. We've had customers call us in, call us who they actually figured out ways of getting to servers that were completely non-domain joined, had randomized passwords, 32 characters, completely separate subnets. These are people mm -hmm. who truly know how VMware works, how Veeam works, how AD works, and they're high tier people who are getting in. So getting a copy of the backups on-prem that allows for that immutability, where we don't have to wait for the internet to pull it down and all that, getting something on-premise that's immutable really has changed the game on a lot of these discussions. Yeah, I completely agree. And then I think actually, if if I go back to one of our previous LinkedIn lives when you were on, you, you brought up the point about bandwidth, you know, and that was another, you know, eye opener to some that may never have thought of that, right? You've got, everybody always associates the cloud with just cost, you know, mm -hmm. API costs, puts and gets, and how much it costs to store it there. But what about the actual ability to get it there? Let's say money was no object, but you're limited based on geography with your throughput. You know, that's another good reason why you need to really focus on having that on-site immutable copy. Yeah, a lot of the companies we work with are like manufacturing companies and factories are built in the middle of nowhere often because yeah. it's cheap labor. So they build them out there and then afterwards they're like, oh, we need we need internet. What can we get? <laughs> and they end up a lot of times on these relatively rural telephone yeah. companies who are like, oh yeah, we can get you something great. We can get you 500 meg. It's like, <laughs> hmm, okay. So they mm -hmm. deal with it. But then when you try to pull down 50 terabytes over 500 meg, it's days, literally days just to get it. Yeah. And then you have to have somewhere to put it. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And the whole time the business is down. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, as a, at a, as a beta user yourself, you know, what were some of the favorite features that you saw and how does that translate into selling it? The, the number one the number one feature for us was actually the company itself and how easy it was to work with. Um, you know, the product is super simple, which is what we look for. You know, we obviously make a lot of consulting money by having complicated products and so complicated the customer can't work on them. But it's also just a pain because as we get new people, we have to train all the details of how to set up yeah. all these complicated products. Oopi really is as simple as it's pointed out. You put IPs on it, you set up your alerting, you get your S3 buckets and your keys, and that's it. It's done. So customers love that simplicity because they don't feel beholden to us for everything. They yeah. feel comfortable with the product. Um, and the one-click updates is so nice. Um, I can't count the number of appliance makers yeah. that don't include all the updates in the one-click update. The mm -hmm. one-click update gets their software updates, but it doesn't take care of anything else. So every once in a while, there's like this major release that actually updates other things you have to do manually, but it really is one-click. Um, yeah. I was actually just training, uh, we moved our unit to a different network and I was training a new person on how to uh, set it up yesterday. And they were just amazed. They're like, that's that's all? like. I don't have to do anything else. I was like, no, just log in and check for updates and run them every so often. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it's done. It's simple. It's very easy to get up and going. 
Yeah, completely agree. And, you know, the, the thing about the updates, too, that's so critical that everybody needs to be aware of is not just the OOPI software update. It's actually the Linux kernel patches as well. So if there's a known vulnerability, if I can talk today, uh, we pull that down as well and apply it. So it's not just the OOPI. It's a comprehensive, like you say, one click update that couldn't be easier. And I've actually put the QR code here up on the screen. And it's so simple. Uh, Anthony Cusimano, our director of technical product marketing, and I literally created this playlist called Box to Backup in 15 minutes because truly it is that quick and simple to actually completely rack and stack Ubi and have backups running to it within 15 minutes. There's just not a lot to configure. And that goes back to Cam's earlier point about it being a velocity play. It is just so easy. You're just able to turn these out versus doing a day or two or a week of implementation services. Mm -hmm. So why did Mirzon decide to jump in, you know, with Object First from the beginning? So part of my role is also our R&D for new products. Um, and I've set up a basically a process we go through for any new product. And there's a lot of explicit questions on it, like channel only, because if it's not channel only, are we going to be competing with Dell when we try to sell Dell's crap, um, which happens all the time and it's infuriating. Um, good margins obviously, because um, we don't want to be selling more Adobe at 5% margin. That's that's not fun at all, because um, right. if you spend any time at all, you've lost your money. Mm -hmm. um, and then deal reg protections. So it was mentioned earlier, but we like having a deal reg program that gives us enough margin to where we can price stuff and beat people without deal reg regardless. Um, mm -hmm. We've had that before. People it's like, oh, well, deal reg gets you two points. And it's like, they can just mark down two points and we <laughs> yeah. can get undercut easily. But right. the way that the margin tiers are set up makes it really easy to sell it at a fair price to the customer where we're still protected and get our margins, um, which is, I mean, we're, we're all businesses. Um, dot yeah. com dot not dot org as uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were saying at Veeam on last year. Um, yeah, and the last thing, really, a lot of times we don't work with smaller companies um, purely because of VC disappearing randomly. But Ratmir was actually the biggest thing that brought us on with Object First. Um, when we started with Veeam, they had six employees in the United States. Um, yeah. We were the first gold partner. Uh, we were in real early, too early. Version one was not, not even close to baked. Um, but we got in and we've, Met, we've had drinks with Ratmir a lot. I don't think you do anything else with Ratmir, but um, and talk to him. We know him. We've watched how he built Veeam from six US employees to like 7,000 now or something crazy yeah. to a billion dollar company. And he doesn't abandon projects, you know, from back in Alita to Veeam. He sticks with stuff. He knows how to grow companies, he knows how to make them. And we rode the wave with Veeam to do hundreds of installs. And so he was really something that gave us a whole lot of confidence in this company. Plus, obviously, he's got a lot of connections over with Veeam still. So, you know, we knew the companies would keep working together and you wouldn't have that random just like, oh, well, Veeam released the new API and they won't share it with us. They're only giving it to preferred partners or something stupid like that. Yeah. Um, so we had a lot of confidence in the company because of him, but then everything else about the channel was also set up in a way that we really liked. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. And having spent 10 years at Veeam myself, I certainly wasn't there at, at version one. I was there about version five going into version six uh, and just to see the company evolve the way it evolved. And one of the things that was always you know, resonant with me is you know, Veeam is over there innovating ways to leverage data once you've already got a backup. So when you set out to create an ideal purpose-built backup target for Veeam, it has to perform. You know, you can't sacrifice immutability and security and even affordability and then have it be slow if your goal is to have it as that initial target for Veeam customers. And that's why Ubi is such a great target. It is secure. It's very simple, but it's also very powerful. So instant recoveries and things like that, sure backup, data labs, all the stuff that Veeam has been innovating, Ubi by Object First powers all that. So you're not sacrificing anything 
by going with object storage on-prem with immutability as a bonus. Yeah, and it's important to point out too, um, if you haven't worked with V12 specifically of Veeam, the whole object stack was rewritten. And if you've in the past experienced some of the performance problems or the direct backup problems, that is night and day difference with 12 yeah. versus previous versions. And 12 is the only one that's really supported for UB. So right. you need to get there regardless. And it performs extremely well natively with object now. Yep, absolutely. So on that vein, like where do you see object first as a company going? So it really just comes down to the Veeam install base. Um, we have hundreds of Veeam customers across the US. Um, the every almost every one of them can be a object first sale. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the very, very small ones, it's a harder sell. You know, we've only got five terabytes of data total might be a harder sell. But anybody in the mid market, it's pretty much a pre made database to call against to work against. So you can basically go to your sales team and be like, all right, look in the CRM, who's got Veeam, go push this. And it makes it really easy to get it out there. So yeah. I think it'll probably be similar to what happened with Veeam, where there's suddenly a critical mass point and then it just blows up. Um, yeah. You know, Veeam really around version four or five, you know, yeah. when when v, v Power NFS slash instant on dropped, yeah. which I think was five, four, I can't remember. Yeah. But when it dropped, that was the point where all of a sudden companies were like, oh, these people aren't just messing around. They're actually like making a real product. And right. then it was just stratospheric growth from there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I was there for it. Yep. I think uh, <laughs> we won best of show, best new technology, a bunch of those, you know, awards out at VMworld that year. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what would be your advice to partners who are thinking about joining our partner program and selling UB? Um, it really is a good product and they really are a good company to work with. Um, you know, we have not had any issues reaching out to people, talking to them. If we had questions about things we wanted to do, um, they're very easy to talk to and they're willing to bring people in to work with you. You know, if you ask the wrong thing to the wrong person, um, you know, Ryan Post was my go-to for everything. And finally, it's like, okay, this you can take over here. Talk to Vitaly about that. Um, so, but they are really easy to work with. And everything down to like product features. Um, I've submitted multiple features in the beta. And a lot of them were included uh, immediately almost. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're dynamic. They listen to their partners. And they actually really seem to uh, want to have partnering relationships versus just resell our crap. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I heartfelt and I completely agree. I mean, we, we want to see our partners succeed and we want to see the Veeam user, you know, succeed and never have to pay a ransom. The whole reason we're here. So flipping it around a bit, what type of feedback have you received from your sellers and end users that have actually had their hands on with Ubi? Um, Some of the best feedback that we get on products is it just works. You know, we were saying that about Veeam forever. Yeah. Um, people, you know, we were back of exec before Veeam. That damn thing couldn't run for a week to save its life. Um, <laughs> it was just a constant care and feeding. Yeah. And, you know, we started getting Veeam and all of a sudden people are like, I don't have to spend hardly any time on my backups. I just right. get the email every day and it, it worked. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really been happening with Ubi as well. We put it in places and they're just like, it could be local storage for all I can tell from functionality. I don't yeah. have to do anything to it. It just runs. It's got telemetry that owns home. So people know what's going on with it. I don't have to watch it like a hawk every day. I run my updates that happen very quickly and easily and it's done. I don't have to worry about it. Um, which simplicity is becoming harder and harder in IT anymore. You know, everything from cloud integrations to diverse networks to all the security we have to keep layering on. Everything's getting so hard and no one has enough people to right. get things done. So that simplicity has just been the overwhelming feedback and the I feel safe now type yeah. conversation. Because yeah. um, when we talk to a lot of executives, they're just like, I don't want to be in the newspaper. I don't want to be that person who ends yeah. up in the newspaper at, for um, ransomware. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be the next next statistic for sure. Right. Yep. Um, 
So, so Brent, final question. I mean, do you have any success story that really sticks out, you know, throughout your time and, and using and working with object first and Ubi that you'd like to share, you know, as a final thought? Um, I do have one. It's actually more of a unsuccess from another product standpoint. So we talked about how simple and easy it is to set up Ubi. Um, mm-hmm. One of our customers recently was like, well, we've got this old net app. We've got this old HP box. We saw all the Veeam demos for how easy it is to set up Veeam hardened repository. We did yeah. the demo at Veeam. On. It's five minutes. It's super easy. We're going to build this instead. That's mm-hmm. what we're going to do. It's like, okay, it's not quite that easy, but go for it. So right. they start setting up their, their hardware. And immediately they're like, oh, we don't have the ILO license. Crap. So they have to deal with that. They install Ubuntu and immediately have a kernel panic. Like what, what's going on? Well, their firmware was too old to run with the most recent version of Ubuntu without kernel mm-hmm. panicking. Well, yeah. they didn't have support. So they had to go through all kinds of hoops to get that going. Yep. They got all that. Then they're like, oh, storage is iSCSI now. How do I set that up in Linux? <laughs> it's a Windows shop. And right. so they're trying to figure out iSCSI. They get it figured out. MPIO actually just automatically worked, which was pleasant. But then the mount points. Well, everything had been mounted to, with the direct drives. Now they had to use the MPIO mount points. Mm-hmm. And they finally figured out how to get all that going, got it in FS tab, rebooted, and it wouldn't boot anymore. It went into the equivalency of safe mode. And it was because they didn't know that they had to change stuff in the FS tab to tell it to bring that work up before it. Mm-hmm. So they got all that done. They get it added into Veeam, and it works like they expect. They go, they disable SSH, and then promptly go, oh, how do we update this now? Because it was a physical box and they didn't have the ILO license. And, oh, well, now we can't, we have to go to the data center to get it back. Uh, So the customer was trying to do something cheap with existing hardware, which is something we advocate for a lot, but they weren't Linux people. And so all this stuff that a Linux person would have been able to knock out in just a few hours they probably spent something around 15, 16 hours getting this box set up to try to be a hardened repo. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, we're not 100% confident that we did everything right. You know, the number of issues we had, we we think we locked it down right, but we're not 100%. I mean, it comes locked down right. It's good. And then they're like, oh, crap, what's the CVE? What do we, is that apply to us? Uh, Ah, do we need to patch this? So, They worked to save money, and in the end, it has caused them all kinds of frustration, and it hasn't given them the peace of mind they really wanted. Um, yeah. And we already talked about how that's the number one thing we're getting with customers where we've deployed these. So. Yeah, I, everybody's simple until they're not, right? And it's until the rubber has to meet the road. And to your point, it, if you think you can do it and you think it's simple, but you really don't have the Linux expertise, there's all these different things you got to be aware of that you're essentially learning on the fly. And then to your point, that's the worst, the worst outcome is they go through all the motions and then they have doubt because they don't know if they're actually protected. If they didn't exactly harden things right, if they didn't set that permission, right. You know, who knows at this point. And, you know, the other thing I just want to, you know, bring up while we've got you is we've mentioned support a few times and earlier you heard David, you know, talk about the separation of the attack vectors, which I also think is extremely important. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. But one of the things that's really, really nice about the integration with Veeam and being purpose-built for Veeam is that support mechanism. So if there's any issue that arises, be it a Veeam-created issue or potentially an Oopy issue, we have a warm transfer set up with Veeam support. So from a partner perspective, how many times have you got the, it's VMware, no, it's Microsoft. And it's just the constant finger pointing. No, it's the storage. And nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to share information. Nobody wants to have, you know, three-way calls and joint uh, troubleshooting sessions. So from an end user perspective, that's a nightmare. So we fix that here at Object First and Veeam. We have that transfer set up. So from a support engagement standpoint, it couldn't be easier. Yeah. And since it focuses exclusively on Veeam, support knows Veeam really well, um, yeah. which is nice. Um, we had we actually had found a bug in Veeam 12. Um, it was patched later, but we found a yeah. bug. And it looked like it was related to 
the storage because yeah. of the weird error message it was giving. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it was somebody had screwed up the error message in Veeam. Um, and we opened a ticket with both. Object first was like, oh, yep, this is a known thing. Once we got to tier yeah. two Veeam, because tier one didn't know anything, tier two Veeam was like, oh, yep, yep, that's a known thing. It's going to be patched. It's coming out. Bleh. And mm -hmm. we went right through it. Didn't have any problems, and it worked really well. That's awesome. So, Brent, on behalf of everybody here at Object First, thanks so much for joining us and, and sharing your stories and your feedback and your customers' feedback with us. We really, really do appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for hopping on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, guys. So in an effort of time, I do want to show you just briefly, I did promise you a demo. So let me uh, let me bring some of this stuff off the screen so we can make this full screen. Now, like I said, in an effort of time, and the cool thing is it is so simple to show, it will only take a few minutes. And that's that's the awesome part about Ubi and Object First is it is very simple. So essentially the setup process, I've been showing you guys a QR code throughout this presentation for that box to backup playlist. If you didn't snag that, you can find it right on our YouTube channel. And we go through all the way from the unboxing, how to set up the text user interface and connect Ubi to the network, how to set up your cluster and host, uh, and then finally, how to add it into Veeam via the web user interface. So where I want to start is that web user interface. So once you have configured Ootby on the network, the setup process could not be easier. When you log on to the web UI, you will be directed to create your S3 keys. So it's very similar to creating a key for any S3 type object storage. You're going to get the access and the secret keys. Very simple. Takes about 10 seconds, literally, to create the key. The next thing you're going to do is create a bucket. Now, you can see we have several of these buckets already created. And if I zoom in here, you can actually see which ones have versioning turned on, which is object lock. That's the immutability. You do have the ability to leave that disabled if the use case were to arise. But the one thing I want to point out is when you create your initial bucket, it is automatically turned on by default. So immutable out of the box, hence the name, right? It is enabled by default when you create your first bucket. And finally, when you go over into Veeam, you're going to add this in just like any other repository that you would add in that's S3 based, right? So you're going to see it just like any other repo. Now, one of the things I wanted to showcase as well, while I've got you, is if we go through the process and you get through the basics, giving it a name, you're going to plug in your credentials. And once you get over to the bucket section, let me zoom in here. You can see that we've selected this ransomware proof bucket, which does have versioning turned on. Now, check this out. We've got make recent backups immutable for 14 days. That's a Veeam setting. If we were to disable this, let's say we're new to object storage. We don't know about object lock. We're really just kind of dipping our toes in the immutability platform. If we were to leave that disabled, we're going to get an error right away from the Veeam side that says, wait a minute the bucket that you're actually landing these backups on is in fact marked immutable. So you need to make sure you turn on this checkbox. So the point is you literally can't make a mistake. If you've created a bucket, left the settings on the default on Ootby, you add it into Veeam as a repository, there's no chance that your backups would land there and not be immutable. So this just goes to the simplicity story. We make sure that that check and balance is in place. Once you've done that, I mean, if we just look at some statistics on a job, I wanted to, to showcase a little bit of the performance. I mean, you can see here that on this particular job, we hit, you know, two gigabytes a second ingest speed. So I talked about earlier, uh, you know, Ubi is very powerful because it has to be because all the innovation that Veeam has built, you know, into their platform. So you can't just be simple and secure if you don't have performance. You can't be simple and performant, but not be secure. So all of our main pillars have to work together to provide that Veeam end user experience of having true immutability on-prem with Ubi. So with that, that's the demo. It's a very, very short and sweet demo because Ubi is simple. So with that, let me bring Cam back on. And David, it looks like David has dropped off. So we've lost David due to his internet issues. So, so Cam, let's just kind of do a quick recap. And, and Brent, I see you still on. I'm going to go ahead and pull it audible and bring you in as well, since you were kind of the star of the show. 
Uh, I just want to go around and thank you, both of you guys for joining us today. Thank you, the, the partner community or the potential would-be partner community that's watching today. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time. We actually went a little long on the webinar, but I think it was very impactful and we talked about a lot of really good stuff. So I think it was time well spent. So final thoughts and takeaways, you know, let's start with you, Cam, you know, what, what's your final message to our would-be partners out there? Yeah, I, it's super easy, just like the product to sign up and become a partner with Object First. I know you've got the QR code there, so you can certainly do that. But the chances are you're already a partner ready to sell us because all our we require is a uh, relationship with one of our two distributors, either Arrow or TD Cynix, which most everyone probably on this call has a relationship already with them. So that allows us to start quoting Object First. And of course, our team is here and ready to help you out. So we'll help you out with enablement, as we mentioned earlier, marketing yep. materials. We'll jump on a demo with your customers. Any way we can help out, we're here to help. Yeah. And, and you mentioned enablement, Cam. So one of the things we just rolled out in the partner portal is full enablement tracks for your reps. So we have a sales enablement track, a technical enablement track, as well as an advanced technical enablement track that really teaches you everything you need to know A to Z about Object First as a company and Oopby as a product. So final thoughts from you, Brent, before we wrap things up. Um, it really is a solid product that is basically a value add that we talk about with every Veeam customer now, whether we're doing a TBR, we talk about it, whether we're actually just doing a net new architecture design, it really just becomes that extra um, thing that we look to put into every environment. And the fact that there's good margin in it for us really compels people to not forget it as well. Yeah. And so yeah. it really is just a great value add that we talk about with every cus every Veeam customer. Yeah, no doubt. I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I would do the same if I was on that side of the table, because at the end of the day, like I said earlier, our company exists to make your Veeam customers experience better. That's the only reason we're here. That's why, you know, you heard David say earlier, we're not just selling to anybody who's everybody that would buy our box. We're specifically targeting the Veeam ecosystem. So with that said, thanks everyone for joining today. I think it was a really great session. Brent, thank you again so much for joining. Cam, really appreciate your time as well. Uh, don't forget, you know, if we put a lot of content out on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you do that. We're going to be putting more content, more videos there. Make sure you follow us on LinkedIn if you're not already. Let's you know stay in contact. We've got a Twitter account as well. For those that are on Twitter, make sure to follow us on all the socials. So with that, guys, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you on the next episode. Y'all have a great week. Thanks.